Okay, so today what we're going to go over um, is just the report bundles. Um, this new option that we have out here that they've been programmers have been working on. Um, it's going to be um, used where you can um, the user can create a list of reports and then they can run together um, based on like a domain event. So it could be maybe like a posting period closing. So every time they close a period or maybe open a period, these reports would run and they would fire and they would go to an email. And then every time they, be, they would be able to see these reports every time this action happens. Um, maybe, maybe posting a payroll or on posting a payroll. That's another option. There's many, many different events that, they, that these reports can be fired upon when they're created. Um, another one would be you can run reports to be immediately be um, emailed to you, or we can actually set them up as a Chrome job, which I will go over each one. Um, actually, the reports, uh, this is located under the reports option, and it's report bundles, it's called. So from here, you can see um, where you can create it. And also, there is an option where you can put um, more columns on your grid, just like any of the others. Um, so all you would have to do is just open those up, and you can add those to your grid if you want to see more information about your bundle in your grid. Okay. Um, so. Creating a bundle, um, you can set it up to be a single or model reports to be emailed to you, to you or a user. Um, in the future, um, as of right now, the programmers are working on um, payroll CD. And this is where this will all be included for the payroll CD information. Um, that's going to be in a few months. Um, so that is in the works. And they will have that, in, um, that function here in a few months for you. But for right now, um, you can still create reports to be emailed to you. And that's kind of what we're going to go over today. So what we want to do is uh, to create your bundle, you want to go ahead and click on Create. And then here is your option. You want to make sure if um, anybody has their phone, if they can mute that for me, please. Thank you. Um, the report bundle. Here you can put in a name. So any name that you want to put for your report bundle, say maybe you, these are for uh, every time you run payroll, um, monthly uh, or monthly reports or um, year-end reports. You can put any bundle name that you like that will tell you what these report bundles are. So I'm just going to put mine as payroll. And then you can also put a description in. So um, any description that would uh, you can put in there that you would like. I'm just going to stick to payroll. And then the tags. Um, this is by created by the user. Um, and there are any user-defined words that mean something to the user that can help them categorize what the report definitions are. So for example, maybe you could tag it as your year-end, monthly. So you can go in there and just you can see if you want to sort um, those report bundles by monthly, then you can do that. And you can just show all your monthly or your year end or payroll reports. Um, so that way when you're in your grid, you can search for them um, easily. You can just put in, type in your payroll or monthly and then those reports will show up. So. I will go ahead um, to the next, is select a report to add to the bundle. So you want to click on the down arrow, and here are several reports. Um, the first several are all from your home option. So any of the home um, reports will show here um, in the first section, the SSDT reports. And also these would show in reports that maybe you have added to your home um, reports that you saved will show. So if you go through, um, and there's several that have been added, but which are for the payroll CD, which the programmers, like I said, are working on. So right now, um, we're kind of going to steer clear of those for now, because we don't, um, those are not kind of in work option. They're not working at the moment, because those are all being used. 
Um, also, the re any re um, the reports that are listed under the reports tab also show in here. So those would be um, listed under there also. And like I said, there's some new ones that are coming up, like personal leave to pay report, sick leave report, leave report. Um, again, these are all going to be our, our being the works of being created for that payroll CD. So I just kind of wanted to go through those. Okay. Um, so the ones that I'm going to do today, I'm going to work on one um, like creating um, a reports to be sent to my email once my payroll is posted. Um, so I'm going to select a few, and I'm going to select. There is an, one that they um, put in here is your W-2 report. And that one's not either under home or reports. I mean, we do have a W-2 report in submission, but this one is just a W-2 report. And I wanna, I'm gonna add that one to my report bundle, because I want, every time I run a payroll, I wanna see a W-2 report for after, after the payrolls each ran. So what you wanna do is click on it, and then it, what it will do, put it into this box here at the top. But you have to make sure you remember to click the plus here to add it to the reports currently in bundle and below. So now this is one of my reports that is included in my reports bundle. So for the next one, I want us to do um, two reports. So I'm going to go ahead and search. And I'm going to search. I'm going to put in um, another one that um, has been created by the program is a leave report. So if you have leave for attendance, for absence, and you want to see that every time after a payroll has been ran, you can select that. And that's the SSDT leave balance report. So now this one has been added to my reports. But again, I got to remember to make sure I click the plus to add it to my reports here at the bottom. So now I have these two reports in my bundle. And again, you can do multiple reports. You can have as many as you want. Um, the other thing I wanna just um, suggest is if you have, um, you wanna edit this, so I, if you uh, click on it in the report options. Take a little bit here. But you can change the report options to be what you want. So every time this report is ran, it's, re it's ran the same way. And it's coming so slow this morning. Okay, there it goes. So your report options. So it's pretty much the same as you see on your reports, the report W-2 and submission option. But here you can you can change it if you don't want it to be employee social security number. Um, you can change it at a point in, to the name or what kind of employer if it's different for you. So again, you have that different options that you can change that here. So in the report bundles, it will run each time how you have it set up. So then what you want to make sure then once they change it, I want it to to run with the sort option of employee name and I want it to be PDF, so I'm gonna keep it that way. And I'm gonna click on continue. So now my W-2 report is set up when it comes to my email. Um, the other one, the leave balance, um, here you can select um, available. Um, so if you want them to all run, you can have your sort number, your page, all leaves, um, and I'm gonna, I want to click on all of them, so I'm just going to remove those over. And again, you can, if you only want to see your vacation or sick leave report, you can change that so that only runs um, with those uh, leave report options. So I'm going to go ahead and click continue. So now I have my reports all set up how I want them to run once my payroll is posted, and then that will be emailed to me. So then, since that is set up, so now you want to make sure you go ahead and click Save. Oh, another option I was just going to say here on, um, if you don't want to see all these different column headings, um, you do have that option to take those off, too. 
you can click that. So go ahead and we'll click save. So now my report is ready to go for my report bundle. And you have to click on the X on the top right to exit out. So now that you see, I have my username, I have a report bundle and description. Now if you would have tags set up, you would have your tags here. And over to the left here, you have a few options that um, if you want to just view it, you can go ahead and view that option. And you can edit from here also. And also you have edit. So you're saying, oh, I want to add one more report to that. You have that option. You can still go ahead and add a report option. So you can go ahead and select if you want to add the birthday report to it. You can add that, yeah. So you can always go back in and add more reports, or you can also delete them if you like. And then if you don't want um, this report bundle anymore, you can go ahead and just delete it, and it will bring up where you, if you're sure you want to delete it or not. And I'm going to go ahead and save it. So for right now, I added, I have uh, three reports added to my bundle. So we'll go ahead and what we'll do is then our next one is that we have to schedule um, the report bundles. When do we want these to run? So that is this little button here, this little clock, schedule report bundle. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. So your next is your job perimeters. So here you have three options under job type options. You have your crone, which is where you can set up a date, um, exact time of when you want these to be ran monthly, but we'll go over that. Your next one is your event. And this will event anytime, um, anytime an event is, is set up. So that might be um, maybe when a payroll was posted or unposted. That's what these modules, um, we were going to use these modules for. Um, maybe when a posting period has been created or open or closed, you have that option to have these reports um, sent to you at that time. So we'll go over that a little bit more. And the last one is immediate. So again, if you need to run these reports and you want to set up all, like you have five reports and I want to see these ran right now, you can go ahead and set that, um, set that up. Go ahead and click immediate and put the output to your email address or maybe somebody else's email address that they want to see these and those will be sent to them um, immediately. So the first one we're going to go over is the Chrome. And again, the Chrome expression um, is again where you can create your own time when you want these reports to be sent to you. And where you can find that is in the report bundles, we have a actual link for you and you can see that in the documentation under reports and it's under report bundles and it would be under the Chrome job type. So we actually have that link here for you where you can just go ahead and click on that. And then here is the Chrome Maker. And this is where you can set up for these reports to be ran at any time. So you, as you can see, we have, it can be ran every minutes, and then you can enter what minutes. If you want that to be ran every hour, starting at what time. Maybe I just want it to be ran daily, every one day, or you can run it every week, every weekday. Again, you can set up weekly. So maybe I only want these reports to be ran on Friday, or maybe Monday morning when I come in. I want these reports to be already in my email, so I can just click on my email, open up these reports, and they're there, and I can go through them maybe for meetings. Um, so that way they're ready, and you don't have to worry about running those when you get in, in the morning. And again, you have monthly, so maybe you want monthly reports, anything that has to do with the month end. Maybe you can, you can set those up. And then also you can do the first, second, third, fourth, Monday. I mean, Chrome options are, there are so many different ways you can run it. And then you have yearly. Again, maybe you want only um, 
certain reports to be ran at year end. Um, again, that is completely up to you and how the user wants that. But for today, I'm going to go ahead and just create a daily one. So every one day, um, well, actually, I'm not going to do a crone. I want to do immediate, so that way you guys can see it. But like to create one, just so you can see. So if I wanted to create it in the start time, um, say 6 o'clock, I want that to be sent to my email every, every day, you would go ahead and click on Generate Crone Expression. So now, here is your Crone Expression that you would highlight and copy. So here it tells you, oh, okay, I'm going to be every, um, every day, even Saturdays, 6 a.m. in the morning, it's going to be sent to me. And it has, you can go up to how many to show. So it's every day. So right now, every day, this is going to be sent to me. But this is just showing those. So I, what you want to do is take that, copy it, and you want to put that then here in your Chrome Express expression box. So now the computer knows that this is, these reports will be ran every, every morning at 6 o'clock. So that's what that Chrome expression, how you would set that up. And then the next would be your send output to. So this is where you would enter in your email address or maybe somebody else's email address. So other destination address where you would want that sent to. And then the archive type, that would be your send multiple notifications to a single attachment, or you can do send a single notification with multiple attachments. So if you want to have um, five emails for your five reports, you have that option. Or if you want to do one email with five reports within it, you can do that that also. So that's what that archive type means. Okay. So I'm not going to use the Chrome today. I'm going I'm to move on to the next one. Any questions on the Chrome? Okay. So the next one for your job types would be the event. And this one, um, again, is where the modules, it uses the modules that we have. So again, if you go through them, you can see different um, rules that are, have been set up that you can use. Um, like again, like payroll post, there's actually a payroll on post. So maybe every time somebody posts on payroll, then you'll get notified that these reports will be sent to you. Period close event or period open. Um, even period reopen. So I'll just let you, you can go ahead go through those um, events because there's, um, I think, about 53 of them right now. So, and the one that I was going to um, the payroll post complete. I'm going to go ahead and click on that one because I'm going to finish the payroll and then post it and then go ahead, oh, payroll post, excuse me. And that's the one I'm going to have my report bundles to run off and fire off of. So then I'm going to go ahead and send it to my app email address. But again, you can put in a different email addresses if you want it to go to different employees. And I want it to put in one single email and then has multiple attachments within that. So now I have my Chrome set up, so I'm going to go ahead and click Save because that's the one I want it to run off of. And since I have that set up, yes, you can see here to the far right the event. So now it shows in my event that I have an event set up for mine. So you can tell which one or which ones actually have uh, events set up within modules. And the last one that I just will go over real quick was the immediate. And again, what like I said, the immediate, um, all that is is when you can just click 
um, enter your email address, and then you can put in, again, if you want a single notification, one email, or multiple. So that's all that was, um, that immediate is. And then once you click on that, it will immediately fire and go to your email. But I'm going to keep it to this one. Okay. Any questions on that so far? Okay. So now that I have my bundle set up. I'm sorry now, I can't get myself off mute. Would, would we do this? Is this the easier path than doing the JSON email of a report, or is that totally different? Um, I think that's different because these are just, because a JSON would be um, if you have a report that you um, imported in and then you want to create, but you can use, I guess if you use that, dot, that JSON file, you can put that in there and then I guess you could create your report off of that. Okay. Because if it's, because um, any of the home and the reports, so I'm, I'm thinking that would be that you could use that. I mean, if you want it to set up at as um, to be ran every certain time for that report, you can do that. Okay, the next thing um, what we would want to do then is my payroll. So I'll go ahead into my payroll processing. And I already have a payroll in, in progress, so I will go ahead and click on details. So now I have my payroll. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and click on post payroll. So now it's posting. And then we're going to go under utilities because the job scheduler, so every um, report bundle um, that you schedule um, will show in job scheduler. So it will, it will tell you how, if it's um, running or if it's pending. So right now, my report is running. So once it gets to complete, and it also can tell you failed, so you'll know if that report failed or, or not. So you can go to here and also you can do refresh. So as you can see, it's still running. So it's taking a little time. But once they're completed, then it'll go to completed status. And also you'll have a pending status. So that's just mean kind of, it's just kind of hanging out there. Um, and then once it gets past the pending, and then it will go to complete. So my report bundle is sitting here now. And this is where if you have them set up to be ran every morning, you'll be able to see this in here. It will show a new report to be ran every, every morning. And then there, mine is complete now. So now that mine, I will get an, one email showing all my reports. And sometimes it might take a little bit to get to your to your email. So I'll wait on that. Is there any questions on the report bundles? I know we didn't go over quite a lot because the payroll CD, like I said, um, they're working on that and we're going to have another uh, session with just the payroll CD um, for that option. Um, but this is just kind of what the report bundles can be used for for, um, for right now. Um, Andrea, Andrea, this is Lori yeah. and I, um, is yeah. there any way to um, regenerate or generate outstanding payables reports. Um, that's not an option, is it? Or am I just missing it? 
outstanding payable report. So, yeah, when when they pay their deduct or their payroll item, that's the step that a lot of our districts miss is keeping a copy of that and they struggle with regenerating it. So there's not a, any there's not a way like anytime they pay their outstanding payables for that report to be fired, right? I will have to look into that. I will ask uh, Greg about that. So it's outstanding payables. So I would they just say want no. To, I would say, would say no. no okay, that's kind mm -hmm. of what I'm. But I mean, eventually, I'm hoping because you know, like right now in um, the payroll process, they got the payroll item detail report. You can actually go back and look at that report after it's posted. But that again is from when you process the payroll, it's not when you truly ran outstanding payables. So it would be nice if we had something that they could just actually recreate it when they ran outstanding payables. But that, what you're asking, is not an option. And I don't know, I mean, eventually if we could get some sort of a report that, that we could do outstanding payables from a prior, you know, period, it, it might be able to be added out into this, the report bundle's options. So that's something we can ask, uh, ask for an enhancement for. Maybe we can talk about that at our next sprint meeting too. I'll go okay. ahead and mark that down. Okay. Any other questions? Andrea, um, if you pick the immediate, instead of event or cron. Okay. Mm -hmm. The report bundle still stays in there, right? So they could have like a bundle that they just, whenever they want to run it immediately, they can just go in and do immediate. Is that right? So you're saying under, at the immediate would be, it would just fire one time. Right. But From what I understood. Yeah, but the, the bundle would still be there so that they just could go in and reschedule it again. Like say they, yes. there's five reports that they just want to run when they want them. Yes, the report but, will stay out here underneath the report bundles. Okay, that's what I thought, I just want to make sure. That is correct. Is there any other questions? Okay. Um, again, like I said, we would um, have another session once they get a little closer with completing all the monthly CD reports and things. Um, then we'll go ahead and have another session on that one. Um, if there's any, any other, not any other questions on this, um, or if you have questions later, please send us an email and we can get that answered for you. Yeah, one more. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Is, uh, is this working the same in USAF? That is... No, not, no, it's not. Not yet, I don't believe. They don't have their, <laughs> their three No, okay. they, I don't think they have theirs quite up, up to date as far as we do, but they are working on it, I know. But there's like, I know their top priority right now is getting the uh, payroll CD pages and getting, getting that done. And so that'll probably be one of the things that they work on next after they get that done. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I think that's all we have for today then. Um, I appreciate you calling in. Sorry, it I had a little issues in the beginning. Um, again, please have a good Friday and then we'll see you on the next. Thank you, have a good day.